Okay, without further ado, because I want to make sure that we see all of Jasper that Emily is willing to share with us today, I'm going to go ahead and get us started. So hello and welcome to the Indiana Arts Homecoming. My name is Bridget Eckert and I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications for the Indiana Arts Commission. I am so pleased to welcome you to the first session of Homecoming, a creative warm up, a feast for the eyes with Emily from Jasper. Um, before I turn it over to Emily, I'm just gonna go over a few things and let a few more of our friends into the room. Excuse me while I multitask. All right, please remain on mute during the presentation until it's time for the Q&A. That way we can just give our full and undivided attention to Emily. Feel free to utilize the chat function to introduce yourself and ask questions throughout the session. If you would like to rename yourself in Zoom, you can do so by hovering over your image, clicking the three dots and selecting rename. Captioning is also available during this session and throughout the conference. You can turn on those um, settings by clicking the closed caption button in the bottom navigation bar. If you have any questions or tech issues throughout the session, please feel free to send me a private message. I'm listed as the Indiana Arts Commission here on this Zoom call. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. I'm going to turn it over to Emily and we're going to see what's going on in Jasper. Emily, take it away. Thanks, Bridget. Hi, guys. Hello, friends. Ah, so exciting to see you all. Uh, some new faces, some familiar faces. So thank you for joining. Um, but it's homecoming 2021 time. I can't wait. Um, sorry, you know, that's why I'm a visual artist. I'm not a musical uh, singing artist. So sorry if you had headphones on. Um, but we are at the Tim Clark Cultural Center in Jasper, Indiana. You guys can see, let's see if I can flip my phone around. We have the art swing over here workshop spaces, the beautiful atrium, and we share the building with the library, Jasper Public Library. I don't know if I can venture off too far, I might lose signal, but they have a sign as well. <laughs> um, so without further ado, uh, let's see if I can change the background. Um, well, I guess I'll tell you what I do here. Um, I am the visual arts coordinator and gallery, uh, well, gallery curator and visual arts coordinator um, at the Jasper Arts Center, Jasper Community Arts, <laughs> not to be confused with Jasper Arts Center, which we do still own and operate building across town where our performances happen and our uh, dance studio as well. The gallery is no longer there. Galleries are here now. We went from one gallery to three galleries and then added workshops, added an atrium, added a neighbor. Um, so it's exciting stuff happening. But uh, do you guys have your coffee? Do you have your beverage of choice? It's almost noon, right? So I don't care what's in your coffee mug. <laughs> um, but let's go on a virtual tour, shall we? I'm gonna flip this around. All right, so here is the atrium. Like I said, the library is there atrium. Uh, we use it for weddings. We use it for receptions. Um, we've had conferences in here, you name it. We could do a bouncy house, we could do uh, movies, you name it. Um, but like I said, the, at the art center, we went from one gallery, and now we have three galleries. Um, galleries are quite large compared to what we had in the past. Uh, we'll go through here, 2,000 square feet-ish. Uh, each to be exact, 15 feet high um, from hanging from the metal beams in there that you can see. Over the summer, we had a installation piece. Um, it was the first time we could ever even think about doing something like that. We had the 15 foot fabric pieces hanging from the, from the rafters there. Uh, uh, blown glass on the floor, music coming through the speakers. It was gorgeous. Something more of an experience than an exhibit, I'd say. Something we definitely couldn't have done at the Blast Gallery. Maybe half the piece of fabric or something on the walls, but nothing to the extreme that we did this summer. 
So let's go get started into the galleries, what we came for. So Abby Laux, she is our first solo exhibit for the month of October and November. Each exhibit is about two months roughly, give or take a week or so, depending on hanging, installation of that sort. Abby Laux is from Celestine, Indiana, uh, so fairly local. She is an art teacher at Springs Valley, K through 12. As you guys can see, she has quite a theme going on of nature. So she says she likes to explore the human connection to nature. Go around to a few of these. You can tell that she has a variety of sizes. I mean, the small guys over here are about six by, six by eight inches. And then over to our right, the largest, I think this guy's about 48 by 36. So Abby is quite a talented gal. Uh, she has about 40 pieces in this exhibit. So she's been pretty busy. She likes to travel. Um, most of her paintings are on the countryside here of England or Ireland, France, um, but also a lot of the national parks. I don't know if she's traveled to all of them, but quite a few. And look at that. We always love to see a sold sticker. So keep that in mind. Everything is for sale. Um, message me if you are interested and I can ship it to you. But yeah, gorgeous pieces. I mean, here you can really feel where she's painting at. Feel the mist of the water the cool fogginess of the day, crisp in the air. Oh. A few more over here, a waterfall. Check out the texture that Abby has. Abby is a plain air painter, um, meaning that she paints on site. However, she does sketch and take photographs of the land where she is, and then brings it back into her studio um, as well. Abby's gonna give a gallery talk if you guys make your way down to Jasper. I know we're virtual now, but I'd love to meet every one of you. You can come down, visit, show you around the place. Um, but Abby is giving a talk on November 4th, Thursday at our opening reception. And she'll give you a little insight of what she does, how she does it, why she does it. That's well. The snowflakes here. One day we'll get to winter. <laughs> and some sun peeking through the trees. Here comes the sun. Don't worry. Don't worry, guys. I won't <laughs> break out to the song again. Guys, here, an early sunrise. You could really just spend the whole day here in her gallery. But we shall move on. That's okay with you guys. We'll move on to our next solo exhibit. Um, her name is Joyce Garner. She is from Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, she's an oil painter as well, but kind of on a different scale so, than Abby and literally on a different scale. So her pieces, this guy here is 10 feet high. Something we couldn't have done in a, our other gallery space. So exciting. And then the long guys over here, 18 feet long. So Joyce is quite the oil painter. I mean, check out all the detail, all the situations going on at the dinner table. Let's 
feeding the dog under the table. Kiddo has enough of it. <laughs> Didn't want to eat the carrots. Gorgeous pieces. Uh, Joyce uses a lot of bright colors, as you see, well, colors of all shades. Um, she says she likes to, or she's more of an emotional painter um, than an, an intellectual painter. And she likes to paint on big canvas, creating more of a novel than a poem. So I thought that was nice. Nice little reference. So Joyce had to build quite a few of these canvas, canvases, excuse me, on site. Um, the truck couldn't fit it through the truck or through the door. So she restretched uh, some of the paintings you hear, see here in the gallery. Joyce and I were chatting and uh, discussing which paintings were our favorites and whatnot. Um, I said, I really like this one. This guy here, and I really like this one. Interesting enough, she said, well, you know, this painting here you see, what's it titled? Uh, for, for Want of a Nail and then by the river are quite similar. See the circles in the trees and the color she uses in here. Uh, but this guy is her newest painting in the exhibit. And this one is her oldest painting in the exhibit. So it's just interesting to me that you see a full circle come around of the artist and what they're doing, how it all comes a full circle. and back to what you first started out in. Another tidbit on this is it's called by the river, but it's different seasons. So you see spring, you see summer, fall and winter, but all in a cohesive painting. Beautiful. Uh, Joyce is, like I said, from Louisville, Kentucky. She is representative by Gardner Narrative Gallery. Um, I think her daughter might run it. And all of her paintings are for sale too. If you have a large wall, let me know. <laughs> and she has quite a web presence just as Abby does. If you'd like to check out her Facebook or order something online, see what she's up to as well. Uh, and then she had one piece that she didn't want to fit into the show, just didn't go with her layout. But she said, she didn't want to take it back on the truck. So I said, leave it here, we'll find a spot. We have it in our art lounge. But before we go to the third gallery, I'm going to sneak back here to our workshops and studios. Uh, here to our left, we have our black box theater. So this is the space for small performances, community theater. Um, we've had birthday parties, well not birthday parties, bridal showers, um, baby showers in the space. We have theater lighting. Uh, we could do conferences, poetry reading, um, uh, open mic night, you name it. And then our workshop hallway. We have open studios, workshops, painting workshops going on today, or pumpkin painting. <laughs> um, but we have open studios, workshops throughout the days, weeks, months, um, go ongoing. If you'd like to sign up for one. So painting, all the easels and drawing horses you can think of. And my personal favorite, Play studio. Oh, 22 wheels. Beautiful. And on our left, we have private studios. So all the private studios are for rent <coughs> and available. 
Um, they are 24 hour access, uh, any type of arts, you saw the piano or um, visual, it's totally up to you. And glazing, play glazing. So let's make our way back to the gallery and see what the third one has to offer. Uh, we have the art lounge here. Mentioned where this is last painting was. Uh, this is where we have our receptions, our hors d'oeuvres, wine, refreshments, uh, and then our sculpture garden. As you can tell, there's no sculptures in there. So if you're a sculptor or know of someone, I got the opportunity for you. So stick with me guys. I can send you home a 18 foot painting. I can give you a private studio for rent, sculpture, or even a solo show. We have, um, I'm looking for 2023 artists to exhibit solo or a group show. Um, so you have my email, if you guys want more information about that. And our last gallery. This is our juried exhibit, 28th annual juried exhibit. Paintings, sculptures, all are accepted. The only rule is really um, professional artists. And if you're an artist from Indiana or the surrounding states, or if you're formally um, from the surrounding states or Indiana. Some of the pieces you might know for artists, or maybe you're one of the artists. Our juror this year was Chester Burton. He is a printmaking sculptor and drawing professor at Indiana State University. So he whittled down, I would say about 150 pieces or so down to 40-ish. So always a tough job, but someone's gotta do it. Pottery, paintings, assembled pieces. And our best in show is David Cunningham. He's from Indianapolis. This oil on panel. So it looks like a photograph. I thought it was a photograph when he submitted but it is indeed oil. So juried exhibits are probably my favorite because you just don't know what people are gonna submit or what the juror is going to like um, or what they're into. Another award winner, Tania Wineglass, also from Indy. So the jury show I always think kind of appeals to everybody. There's something everybody's gonna like. You'll like at least one of the pieces. And then additional little tidbit to our space. We have the gift nook. So it's not quite a shop, it's a nook. Uh, these are for artists and makers of all kinds. Anybody can display just small, medium-ish pieces, three-month rotation, um, make some side money if you guys want to display some of your pieces, or maybe you're not ready for a solo exhibit, you just kind of want to feel the waters and get your craft out there, um, you'd be happy to display your work. So, like I said, and then through here, uh, we do share the space with the library. Um, uh, and then the atrium is a shared space as well. Um, but you'll know more and get to know more about that relationship and how it was joined and how we came together at our um, session with our directors, Christine and Kyle, tomorrow. So, and that concludes your gallery tour.
virtual gallery tour of the Tin Clark Cultural Center. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily. Yeah, we're about five minutes now until our keynote begins. Um, so I want to invite everybody, if you have any questions for Emily and the city of Jasper, go ahead and drop those in the comments. I'll go ahead and just start with one that I have. Emily, it feels like uh, the center really has a commitment to showing local art and local talent, whether that be in your region or just in the state. Um, can you talk a little bit about more about that relationship that you've developed with artists? Absolutely. I mean, as you guys see, there's opportunities for instructors. You can be a workshop instructor. You can display in the gift nook or a solo exhibit. Um, we don't accept all local artists that, um, that submit just because they're local. Uh, we do have to go through a committee process. So we do an open call, a portfolio review amongst probably 12-ish artists, retired artists, um, art advocates, and they whittle it down to the 12 artists to display more now because we have three galleries. Um, and then we go from there. But the local artists, yes, definitely. I mean, this is the space, this is the, the hub of Jasper for artists to kind of just get their foot in the door if they want to take a class, teach a class, um, or just if we have, uh, we have a holiday market coming up, if they want to start it out there and then kind of work their way up to a, a Joyce Garner with 18 foot paintings or Abby Labs with 40 pieces. So yeah, we encourage it. Um, but it's not just local last year, well, a couple years ago, a few years ago, I guess, uh, we had an Italian artist. He was a, um, ink and sketch, did lots of inks and ink drawings. Um, so from Italy and he brought his stuff here. So really we welcome everybody. <laughs> awesome. And then to close us out, Emily, can you give us a little preview of what's coming next for the Jasper Arts Center? Why, what's, what's going on Jasper Community Arts? Uh, let us have it. Yes. So the holiday market, I told you about that. That is the first weekend of December. So if you guys, you know, make that trip down to Jasper to come see me and say hi. You can check out the artists as well. Um, we have Romy and Claire Designs. They are coming uh, next month. And then we have a local exhibit. See, there's local again. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we have performances at the Art Center as well. So don't forget about them and check out what we offer there. And workshops, like I said, daily, weekly, monthly are happening and open studios daily. So please check us out, say hi, or just be nosy and pop in. <laughs> That's definitely my style. Just be nosy and pop in. We do have one more question. I will say from uh, all the folks watching, do you guys have opportunities for local performance artists? I noticed you do have a black box theater. We do. So we have the black box theater. Um, ACT is Actors Community Theater. It's a community theater um, that they put on performances so if you're part of that group, absolutely. They're always having auditions, um, but we can always do special events and one-off events. Uh, like I said, poetry reading, or um, we had a saxophonist in the other day called up that she wanted to perform. So absolutely, we'd love to have you. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Yeah, Kyle just dropped in the chat for those interested in submitting work to display in one of the galleries. Go ahead and click on that link for all of our artists watching. And I'm going to go ahead and drop another link into the chat for our keynote starting here in just a few minutes. So Thank you so much, Emily and Jasper Community Arts for starting off our Indiana Arts Homecoming with a bang. Definitely got to make my way down to Jasper. Please, please do. <laughs> <laughs> Bye everyone. See you over at the keynote. Bye. Thank you.